Scott here from Scott's Bass Lessons again. And if you haven't checked out scottsbasslessons.com yet, make sure you go check them out straight after this lesson because there's a ton of free shizzle there for you. Uh, bass Lessons are just like this. So this is Bass Riff of the Week number, what, what week is it? Ten. Number 10, DMAC on the other side of the camera. Um, so Bass Riff of the Week number 10. And for this lesson, I thought I'd do some double stoppy type stuff like and, and this actual little, that little lick, that little, uh, you know, that melody, I kind of stole that from um, a, an amazing bass player. You've got to check him out. He's called Matthew Garrison. Um, absolutely phenomenal player. Um, uber, uber, everything. Like one of my, you know, I was so into it. Like when I first heard him, he just, wow, it just blew me away. And um, you've just got to check him out. He's uh, based over in Brooklyn, I think, and he's got a great venue as well over there that is um, something to do with, I'm not sure if it's his venue or whatever, but it's called Shapeshifter Labs. And they do some really, really cool stuff over there, loads of improvisational stuff. Um, I haven't been over there yet, but I'm hoping to in the near future. So this little, it's like a doubly stopped type thing. Um, Pino Palladino also uses them. In fact, a whole load of bass players use these type of things. But the first guy that I, uh, or one of the first guys that I heard it and I was like, oh, I've got to get that into my playing was Matt, Matt Garrison. Um, so let me just talk you through this riff just so you can, you know, give you some context to what I'm doing. With all of these riffs, uh, it's really important that you understand not only how to play it, but also, you know, why, why it works. So you can not only just play the riff, but you can take parts of these riffs and use them in your own riffs and songs or whatever you're doing. And that's the cool thing about knowing your chord tones and your arpeggios because it gives everything you play context. Without context, it's just, you know, uh, it's just a little bit random. So you're not gonna be able to take that information and confidently use it on other stuff that you're doing. So the, the chord sequence that this is playing over, and if you want the backing track, by the way, just hit the link below this video. It will um, take you to, through to another page and just follow the instructions and you will go through to the exclusive toolkit area on Scott's Bass Lessons where you can download it. So, and yeah, so you'll be able to download the full, the, the full play along track and we're gonna throw in the tab and notation as well. So obviously super important if you want to check out the notation or tab, you'll be able to download that there as well. So hit the link below this video to do that. So the, the chord sequence that we're going over is, is relatively easy. It's just like a D minor. Okay, so. That sound, okay, to an A minor. Can I just mention that I've got a hole as well in my glove? I'm just looking down there thinking, uh-oh, <laughs> new glove needed. Uh, by the way, guys, anybody that's wondering about the gloves, it's because I've got a neurological hand condition. Long story. If you check out, just write Scott Divine Gloves, you'll find the page. It'll come up in Google. It's been searched a trillion times, so uh, go check it out if you're wondering what that's all about. But yeah, so the chord sequence is just D minor to A minor. And the... On the A minor, I'm just really using chord tones. On the D minor, I'm, I'm more, you know, just really. That's all I'm doing on that D minor. I'm just hitting, sometimes, the, sometimes it's a D, sometimes the octave. So I'll hit the root and the octave together. Gives you a nice fat sound when you use both, both octaves. And then we've got this little double stop thing that I'm gonna show you in a minute, and then. A minor again use the octaves and then we've got a so that was just the A minor and here I'm just really using the A minor arpeggio and, and it's the, you know what the articulation is everything here it's not it's not Big difference, right? It's more elastic feeling than that. And this is, I see huge, huge problems with a lot of bass players that don't use articulation correctly. They just, 
They play it just every, all the notes. There's no sort of like, you know, hills and valleys in their bass lines. There's no articulation. So, you know, it's really important that you get the correct articulation there. So just, I'll take you around the A minor there. I'm just hammering on to that A, okay? So if you look at the A minor arpeggio, that's the A minor arpeggio, A minor seven. I'm just hammering from the seventh to the octave, to the root, sorry, really fast. Minor third, and then the same again to the fifth. So again, two, three, four. Okay, right, so when you do the, and then, so there we've just gone, this is just on the end of that, what I've just shown you. So G, E, and D, and that takes you back down to that D minor. The notes are, well, the G, D, E, and D, but the, um, the intervals within the A minor, so it's fifth, seven, five, and then it's onto the, the D minor there. So again, you can see from that, I'm just using chord tones there with a bit of uh, funky articulation. So, and, and you can do this on anything if it was A minor. If I was to play that without articulation, with, you know, it just adds a, a, a whole heap of cool to the bass line, right? So that happens on the A minor, and then we've got the, so it goes two, a three, Four. Oh, sorry, that one there. Okay, so let me just talk you through this now. So you hit the D octave, this is the entire riff. So this double stop here, you bar the A and the D with your first finger and you hammer on with your third finger onto the B. But you've still got the, the D ringing underneath, okay? That's still ringing. Then, then you pick the little finger with the D as well. So this hand is always picking two strings at the same time. Yeah. And then, that's how it ends, so. And loop that, it's best to loop it if you're having any sort of like issues with using the right fingering or trying to make it feel natural. Just loop it round, two, a three, a four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four, slow. Three, four, three, four, even slower. Three, four, <laughs> three, four. Okay, so, and then so, from the top of the riff. Now this bit is the same, the same movement, exact same melody, except we've got the first finger on the D and the G. Okay, from the top, two, three, and a four, and a... Up here. I'm gonna get 
get to that bit in a minute. Remember the articulation on this part. Okay, now the last bit I want to mention just on that D is sometimes I play the D and then those harmonics. Which are just the over the seventh fret on the D and the G string. And I stop it as well. It's not. It's. Okay, so let's look at this crazy, this lick on the end. Now, this is over a D minor to an A minor, and what I love to do on minor chords is build a major arpeggio from the minor third, okay? So if we've got an A minor, we build a major arpeggio from the minor third of the A minor, so it's building a... Build a C major arpeggio from the minor third of the A minor, which is a C. Okay, so for instance, just to put this in another context, if we had a G minor chord, we would build a major arpeggio from the minor third. So B flat's the minor third. Okay. And all that works over G minor, so I'm just playing B flat major. Arpeggio. Now what's cool about what I'm doing over this riff is I'm actually playing a C major sharp 11, 9 sharp 11 arpeggio. So C, so we go root, major third, this is in C major 7, over the A minor chord, root, third, fifth, major 7, 9, and then sharp 11. And that gives us like a dominant sound. A, a, a um, not a dominant, dominant sound, a Dorian sound over that A minor. Okay. And the fingering for this, one, four, two, one, four, three, on that sharp 11. Let's do that really slowly. Slowly. Remember all the tab is, you can get that for free. Click the link below the video. Okay, so that next part of the lick. Kind of visualizing this more of a minor so d c b d c b so it repeats e d and then that d is the start of the riff again now the really tricky bit of this is getting this getting that fingering right you've got to finger it like this index little finger, third finger, index, little finger, slide, slide, so that little finger has to slide the second time, first, and then first, slowly, Context of the riff.
So if, you, if you're struggling with that part, just loop it. good when you're practicing these things to really try and ramp up the speed so when you're playing it within a, the riff you're not at the edge you know you're chilled which is why I can play it really fast like that but within the riff it feels chilled when I'm playing it because I can play it you know I can play it you know when you're playing a lick like that or a melody you don't want to be just right on the edge of falling off. You want to be able to push further, further with it, with the speed, and then move back, you know, so you've got, you know, you're not going to fall off and, and mess it up. But don't worry, you know, I've messed these things up a ton, so you've got to go through the, uh, you know, you've got to go through the process of that anyway, so it is what it is. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the riff this week. I've tried to... Um, I'm trying with the riffs that I've been working on recently, especially like last week's riff as well, and uh, with the approach notes. If you haven't checked that approach notes riff out um, yet, yeah, check it out. It's had like over 20,000 views in the last week, so uh, people are really enjoying that one. Um, but with these riffs, I'm, 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 you know, when I started doing them, I was just sort of like, you know, playing them up to speed and then slowing them down. But now I've found, especially from the feedback from you guys, that you actually like to, you know, understand the inner workings of why that riff works and and how you can use it in the context with your own music, you know, taking into consideration, you know, where I'm playing root notes, where I'm playing, you know, thirds, minor thirds, fifths, and things like that. And if you haven't got into chord tones and arpeggios yet, I urge you to go check out my website, scottspacelessons.com. There's a ton of stuff on there that you can check out. And uh, because getting your arpeggios and your chord tones into your playing is so important for your development as a, as a bass player musician. It's, it's how we play chords, right? A guitar player or a piano player would play chords using them all at the same time. You know, we do the same thing. It's our job within the band to do the same thing and more, you know, um, also provide the rhythm as well. But we need to outline the chords. So we do that by using the chord tones and the arpeggios and then scales after that. It's really, really important that you get those into your playing. So hopefully you enjoyed this bass riff of the week. There'll be another one coming next week. If you want to download the tab and the backing track for this, hit the link below this video and just follow the instructions and you'll be taken through to the exclusive part of Scott's Bass Lessons uh, called the Toolkit Area where you can download them completely for free. And other than that, keep a look out next week. There's another bass riff of the week coming this way. In fact, there's another lesson coming this week as well at the end of the week, so keep a look out for that. Take it easy and I'll see you in the show.